We've got our federal director here, Franco Terrazano. Now, Franco just led the way on an important victory. It kind of slid by, but when you look at dollar values on getting something done, I'm glad we don't pay uh, Franco a commission. Let me just tell you <laughs> that right now. We can't give him a slice of that pie because that pie is too big. Here's, here's the issue at hand. I'm actually going to read a quote from Franco's column published in the Financial Post this summer. Quote, COVID-19 subsidies were always supposed to be temporary. It's now time for the feds to set an end date to all of the spending before our fiscal house falls to pieces. We cannot afford a repeat of last fiscal year. And now here's what we've got. Finance Minister Christia Freeland recently announcing. Here's her quote. Our support needs to be more narrow, more targeted, less expensive. We need to look forward to a day now not too far off when we will be able to bring it to an end entirely. So Franco, before we get into all of the numbers, I'm giving you some credit here uh, and you should take some of it, but what role did our uh, Canadian Taxpayers Federation supporters play in moving the government on this? Oh, the Canadian Taxpayers Federation supporters played a huge role, a huge role. For starters, uh, thousands of our supporters signed the petition to make sure that this temporary COVID-19 spending remained temporary. But even more than just the petition, right when the finance minister, Christia Freeland, right when she was making deliberations on whether or not to extend these costly subsidies, so many of our supporters fired her an email telling her that we have to keep these temporary spending measures temporary. We can't afford to have these costly subsidies become permanent red ink. We, and, and our economy, it can't afford to keep paying people not to work. So our supporters took action and, and I'm sure it made a huge impact because I just can't believe that the Trudeau government would stop wasting money unless it got a ton of pressure and our supporters supplied the pressure. Yeah, it's not, I would say, uh, love this government, hate it. Uh, you can be on either <laughs> side of it, but I'm pretty sure their default value isn't to say no on any spending. So if they got pushed to uh, slowing things down a little bit, probably uh, it's because they got a little help and go in that direction. But let's quantify this problem a little bit. These programs, and we're talking about this CRB, things like that. What kind of dollar amount are we talking about? How much do these so-called temporary programs cost? Uh, hugely, hugely expensive. So in 2020 alone, these COVID-19 spending from the federal government was estimated to be $271 billion. So that's like the federal government sending out $700 million every single day. Now, to put that into even more context, $271 billion, that would make up more than 70% of the federal government's budget in a normal year. All right. So this summer and uh, throughout the last number of months, really, since uh, the first wave of COVID hit, we've been pointing out, listen, temporary programs, we understand them at the beginning, but they got to stay uh, temporary. Finally, you're starting to see some movement on the government side. They're starting to recognize the math. We just can't keep throwing money out the door, like you've been saying. So they're starting to change. Uh, I wouldn't say they're all the way there yet. Let's just be honest about that. But we're seeing some movement in the right direction. What kind of change are we seeing so far? Well, first, Todd, I think you bring up some good points. I think the way that we should look at this from a taxpayer perspective is that this is a good first step. It's a good first step. We have to we have to acknowledge that the finance minister, she, she herself said that this was always sold to Canadians as being temporary COVID-19 spending is very important to keep it temporary. Now we got to shift it to being more targeted and less expensive. So we have to recognize that. And I think, like I said, it's because of a lot of pressure that the CTF supporters put on this federal government. But here's what's happening. So we had these very broad, very costly subsidies like the CRB, like the wage subsidy for businesses. Is. And essentially what the federal government is doing is ending those broad, costly subsidies and moving towards more targeted, more narrow, less expensive subsidies for the next few months. Yeah, and while that seems like an obvious thing to do, to send help to the places really needed and not all of the places, that wasn't a, that wasn't a done deal. There were a lot of people calling for these programs to become permanent and continue to just fire hose money everywhere. So it is a big deal that we're starting to see that narrow down. But okay, let's talk about some of the issues at play here. Ultimately, 
one of the things these programs were, uh, were designed to do was to pay people not to work, especially at the beginning of the pandemic when we needed people to stay home. We we're paying people not to work. But it's always kind of funny. We, uh, you get what you pay for. If you pay people not to work, <laughs> some of them won't work. That's what will happen. And some of them will continue to not work, even when we desperately need the economy to be uh, uh, firing up again. So talk a little bit about those unintended consequences beyond the fact that we're trying to keep people home at the beginning of the pandemic to, to uh, keep a handle on it. What kind of unintended consequences did we see in terms of people not working when probably they could have been? Well, it's, it's so clear that this was certainly and still is a tax pair issue, right? When you're talking about $271 billion of spending in just one year, it's obviously a taxpayer issue. But this is also an economic issue. It's also an issue for so many small businesses who have been taking it on the chin for the last year and a half. And one of the key issues is, Todd, as you brought up, well, hey, it doesn't take a PhD in economics to understand that if you pay people not to work, fewer people are going to work. Now, even near the end of this, the CRB was still dishing out about 300 bucks a week. So that's about the same as if you worked uh, a $15 per hour job for about 20 hours a week. That's about the same amount. So it's pretty easy to understand that if, if someone was making that type of money, uh, why they maybe would rather take the tax dollars and run rather than lace up those work boots, right? But it's not just guys like us pontificating on the chalkboards. No, we were hearing legitimate concerns from so many small businesses. Um, even a survey that was put out from the Canadian Federation of Independent Business uh, found that about 43% of small businesses had issues getting Canadians back to work because they would rather take EI or other COVID-19 related benefits. Um, that number goes up even higher if you look at the hospitality industry, where it was nearly two thirds of those businesses in that hospitality industry that were having a tough time getting Canadians back to work. Yeah, and that's a huge deal. It's funny. I think you just see that uh, in your day to day life, too. You walk by so many small businesses, especially uh, in the restaurant industry, hospitality, hotels, retail. So many of them have signs. Come on in. Work for yeah. us. We got we got work to do. Let's go. Uh, and some people who needed to take those programs legitimately needed to. I don't want to discount that. But but I think a lot of us can look at times in our lives where if we could have stayed home and played Xbox instead of going to work, uh, we might not have made the right choice on that, right? So it is important to uh, to get people back on their feet, get them rolling again. That's good for them, good for the economy. Okay, so we talked a bit about some of the big time costs associated with some of these programs. Now we're seeing some new ones rolling out. Uh, how much money are we going to save? Well, it's it's tough to tell, right? Because we weren't given a huge amount of details when the finance minister made this announcement. Here's what we do know. We know that these more narrow, these more targeted uh, types of subsidies are still going to cost taxpayers about $7 billion until May. So that's still, we're still talking about billions of dollars here, still very expensive programs. Um, now, without having all of the details, it's still pretty clear to me that that this would be less expensive than the massively broad, massively expensive subsidies like the CRB or the wage subsidy. So certainly, as I said before, it's a good step that the federal government is reining in some of that spending. But Todd, you know as well as anyone that the fight's not over. We got to hold these guys accountable. And we do have to make sure that all COVID-19 spending of, of this amount does need to come to an end. Okay, so really what we're seeing here is a good direction, but we don't have the details yet. We got to keep putting pressure on the government to get those details right. Because we also got to look at the big picture here. You know, it's one thing to pay for emergency stuff when things are rosy, but it's not a bowl of cherries when we're looking at uh, Canada's overall fiscal situation. How are Canada's finances looking on, uh, on the, uh, in the big picture? Yeah, not... Uh... Not good. Not good at all. Uh, I can't sugarcoat it for you. I mean, we did see budget 2021 a, a few months ago, and within just six years, the federal government is nearly doubling, nearly doubling 
the pre-pandemic debt, right? Every year, we're now spending uh, north of $20 billion federally on interest charges on the debt, not even just the debt, but interest charges, right? That's money that can't go to healthcare, can't go to fix and roads, can't stay in our pockets because it's going to those bond fund managers on Bay Street just to service the government's debt. And, and, and and, you know, not to be the bearer of even more bad news, but I got some more bad news. Uh, just before the federal election, the, the CTF, we put the spotlight on some parliamentary budget officer data that showed that under the trajectory, the federal government wouldn't balance the budget until 2070. Five decades of deficits, folks. And if that were to happen, Todd, I've been talking about interest costs, but if that were to happen, taxpayers would lose out on more than $3 trillion just in interest charges by 2070. And, and, and Todd, you know, you've been talking about the big picture. We've been talking about COVID-19 spending a lot here, but we also got to talk about the non- COVID-19 spending, because there's a ton of that as well. And in 2018, before the pandemic, the Trudeau government took uh, spending to all-time highs, which means that in 2018, the federal government was spending more money than it did during any single year during World War II. Yeah, man. <laughs> We've got to get this rolling. And so this was a huge first step. I think, uh, again, uh, credit to you, Franco. You were pushing on this for months. Uh you know, that national or that uh, financial post piece, I think captured it really well. And I think that stuff does have an impact, huge impact from our supporters, uh, you know, firing up the old email machine and letting your voice be heard, letting government know it's time to dial it back. But of course, every victory is really the start of the next fight. And the next fight is starting to get on top of all of these issues. Thanks for that, Franco. And now thanks to all of you for listening. I uh, really appreciate you uh, tuning in this week. Big thanks to Jimbo, uh, James Wood, our finance, or our uh, investigative reporter who also edits this. Can't get all of them. Some of my little slips will still make it through. But in any case, thanks to Jimbo for helping us out on that. For all of you, thank you so much for listening, but please subscribe. Uh, that'll make sure that you'll know when we put new stuff up and uh, we want to keep in touch. Thanks again. Hi, I'm Scott Hennig, President of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. If you've got another minute, I'd like to ask you to think about the one person you know that would really enjoy listening to this podcast. Do us a favor and do them a favor and send them a quick note to let them know about it. At the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, we believe there is power in numbers. That's why we've worked so hard to build an army of taxpayers who are ready to push back. And we did it because people like you shared our work with that one person that they knew would really appreciate taking part. Thanks for listening, and thanks for doing your part to make Canada a better place.